Shalom, shalom. I'm going to start by giving infinite honor, glory, and praise to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Ahrakakwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles, a great Muslim who teach in real world, and shalom to the Akim and Agwafi, you out there learning along, doing your due diligence, and making your calling of election short. Just a quick lesson. Uh, just a quick lesson on uh, knowing how to carry your temple. So, uh, I just wanted to get a couple points as far as questions. Our Lord tells us when we come to serve the Lord, prepare our souls for temptation. Ecclesiasticus chapter 2 and verse 1. So with that being said, there's going to be a lot of tempting spirits on you. You know, what, uh, whatever spirits may be uh, trying to get you to be drawn away from the truth. You know, there's spirits out there that try to get you to justify you doing certain things uh, to show partiality when it comes to you serving the Lord or when it comes to you uh, making judgment calls. Ecclesiasticus chapter 2 and verse 1. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Set thine heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in time of trouble, meaning don't make any quick decisions. Cleave on to him and depart not away, and thou mayest be increased at the last end. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take it cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. For gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the firm furnace of adversity. And part of, part of uh, that furnace of adversity is a difficult time, you know. Our Lord tells us through, through much tribulation we shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. And part of that comes goes into uh, birth pains, or shalakia, growth pains. So, you know, waking up to the truth and seeing seeing uh seeing different points at which you need to study and seeing different points at which you need to work on in your personal life ultimately goes into you growing in the faith this is wisdom of solomon chapter 15 and verse 7 i'll start at verse 4 I'll start up. I'll start it for verse one, but the point is at verse eight. Yep, the point is at verse eight. So y'all bear with me. But thou, O Yahweh, art gracious and true, long suffering and merciful, ordering all things. So our Lord tells us that He's long suffering, not wanting any to suck to perish, but for all to come to repentance. And part of that is, uh, you know, not being. Not being uh not taking advantage, not trying to take your time so that you can uh uh enjoy your little lusts and temptations in the world, um, and not uh as I said before, not trying to justify or not trying to sell partiality in the law simply for you to simply for you to uh um keep your little keep your little uh comforts or so much and so forth and and. This this lesson got got sparked because there's always questions talking about smoking weed or, or lighting weed up as an incense and bringing it in. Man, a lot of the a lot of the marijuana, well, all of the marijuana is manipulated. So when you manip manipulate the, the, the marijuana and, uh, you know, it's altered into into something that's used as a drug because marijuana is a drug. Uh, it goes into farm. It goes into uh, witchcraft. You know, something that alters your state of mind, your state of being. But this also goes into other things as well. You know, you could you could apply it to several things as far as not coming before the Lord being cleaned, you know, being cleansed of what it is that could be seen uh, unacceptable in the eyes of the Heavenly Father. For if we sin, we are thine, knowing thy power, but we will not sin. Knowing that we are counted thine, so what did uh you know part of part of uh and I'm gonna get to that scripture, but our Lord told us since we are of Hamashiach, walk in Hamashiach, walk in Yahweh meaning you don't you don't uh when our Lord walked this earth, he didn't he didn't he wasn't a friend of the earth and then a friend of the Lord. No, he was he was fully he didn't sin. He was fully set on the kingdom of heaven. There's no examples of our Lord doing none of the things that you see in the urban in the urban community. You know. Throwing no dice, 
He wasn't he wasn't tapping the blunt one time. He wasn't playing cards, you know. He was he was he he came to to call his people out of that, you know. For to know thee is perfect righteousness. Yea, to know thy power is the root of immortality. For neither did the mischievous inventions of men deceive us, nor an image spotted with diverse colors, the painter's fruit, fruitless labors being the idols. The sight whereof entices fools to lust after it, and so they desire the form of a dead image that hath no breath. Even in today's day and time, that's how they that's how they make these builder niggas and these builder thoughts that they post up in front of in front of the communities and have the the, the young kids idolizing uh, uh, people that are set up to destroy them. Because hey, this hey people claim to be godly, but you know our Lord is truly making a big separation because you don't hear nobody out there, you don't see nobody out there looking for the Lord, you don't hear nobody talking about man. You know, I wish days was 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 like it was in the ancient times and things were simpler. Ain't nobody out there complaining. Our Lord tells us in the book of Ezekiel chapter 9 and verse 4, put a, put a mark on those who cry and sigh for the abominations done in the land thereof. Ain't nobody out there crying and sighing, you know. We go out there day out and day in and day out. And it's like people, people only want to be entertained. People only want to, uh, people only want to, uh, people want that mirth. You know, they think that we're we're here for fun. You know, our Lord tells us, work out our own salvation in fear and trembling. We're not here to play. You know, when a, a good amount of death is coming to America, and we're not going to be lending no hand out to somebody receiving judgment because they wanted to slap our hand away when we had when we were giving them a giving them a chance to to receive salvation. You know, for those so for those out there playing, thinking that it's uh, you know, thinking that this is something that you could be one foot in, one foot out. You know, that you can pivot on. No, if you're going to be a wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly in the truth, then be in the truth, you know? Be a doer of the word and not just a hearer only. Our Lord tells us in the book of John that the same word which they heard shall be their accusers in the end. So you, 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 you know, you claiming, okay, I'm, I'm studying, but you still got the same bad habits. That's not showing growth. And when, when something's brought out to you and it's told, yo, that's not good for your body. That's not good for you to do. You know, hey, you should change that. Hey, you should stop doing that. You don't you don't sit on it like I don't know. And then keep doing it and not not seek to learn how or or why it is that the thing that you did is offensive, you know? John chapter 14, John, John chapter 12 in verse 44. Then Yahweh shall cry out and said, He who believes in me believes not in me, but in him who sent me. And he who sees me sees him who sent me. I have come as a light into the world that whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. So all those things that you did in the dark, you got to put them away. You know, even the thought of them, you got to you got to hate vehemently, meaning constantly. If anyone hears my words and does not uh, and does not believe, I do not judge him. As our Lord told us in the book of Corinthians, judge those who are in the house. We do not judge those outside, you know. For I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world, being those of the house of David, those of the elect, those who were chosen from the foundation of the earth and meant to receive salvation. And we don't know who those men, men and women could be, but our Lord sends us out to the highways and the byways in order to call, to cry aloud, spare not. Let, let the house of Jacob know their transgressions. Let the, pe let, let the Lord's people know their sins. He who rejects me and does not receive my words has that which judges him. The word, the word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. So you're going to be seeing a lot of people. So like before, I have not spoken of my own authority, but the father who sent me gave me a command that I should say what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his command is everlasting life. Therefore, Whatever I speak, just as the Father has told me, so I speak. So our Lord tells us to be diligent when entering into that rest. Meaning be thorough, you know.
that don't mean be on point half the time, you know. That don't mean be be off doing your folly, and then every now and then you think of the, you think of a scripture. No, that means you want to be meditating on the scripture on a day on a on a you know as much as on 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 every decision that you make. You know, you want to be meditating in the scripture. Back to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 15 and verse 5. The sight whereof enticed fools, being those different idols, to lust after it. And so they desired the form of a dead image that had no breath, which also goes into a philosophy. You know, this doctrine that our Lord gave us isn't any, any it's not a philosophy. It's the word of the Heavenly Father. For the potter, tempering soft earth, fashioned every vessel with much labor for our service. Yea, of the same clay, he maketh both the vessel and serve for clean uses. Shalakia, both the vessels that serve for clean uses. And likewise, also, all such as serve to the contrary. But what is the use of either sort? The potter Himself is the judge, being our Lord Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai, and our Father, and employing his labors lewdly, he maketh a vain power of the same of the of the same clay, even he which a little more was made of earth himself, and within a little while after returned to the same. And our Lord tells us that they shall, uh, they shall, they shall uh, perish with their idols. Those who worship idols shall perish with their idols. I think that's in the book of Isaiah, if I'm correct. Out of out of the which he was taken, when his life, which was lent to him, shall be demanded. So you thinking that you got it like that and you can live how you want? Hey, your life was lent to you, and our Lord requires all souls. Ezekiel chapter 18 and 4. So you don't want to be taking life for granted, man. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 16 and verse 15. I'll get this real quick. It reads, but it is impossible, it is not possible to escape thine hand, for the ungodly that denied to know thee were scourged by the strength of thine arm, being our Lord Yahweh, with strange rains, hail, and showers, which everybody knows about. Everybody's heard about what happened with Noah, how Elijah rained down, uh, how Elijah called down fire from the heavens. Were they persecuted and that they could not avoid and through fire were they consumed. So as I said before, man, you don't want to be taken advantage of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son and their grace. Because they, they, they weigh the hearts, they weigh the minds, you know. First Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 21. You cannot drink of the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. So when you're smoking all that weed, when you're when you're when you're uh you know doing all those unclean things with your body, with your with your you know with your body, uh with your mind, worshiping idols, uh just just indulging in all types of lewdness and uncleanness, you're drinking the cup of demons. You cannot drink of the cup of the uh, you cannot drink of the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the Lord's table and the table of demons. Or do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than He? So as I said before, man, I go into uh, you know, I constantly touch on the fact that you know those who may be new in the truth, you know, stick in there and 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 see 
where the Lord may have you fit in as far as being uh, being a part of the body. But you don't want to be one foot in, one foot out. Thinking, okay, well, if these guys see me doing this, that means that I could get a pass and I could go off and live how I want. Our Lord is reserving you for judgment if you do that. You know, you want to be wholeheartedly in this thing. You know, you're gonna it's going to come with the, you're, you're going to have to fight. Our Lord tells us, uh, through much trial and tribulation shall we enter into the kingdom of heaven. So you're going to have to fight off of all that, all that old, because uh, once our Lord starts purging you of all those things that was that, that were displeasing to him, they're going to try to fight to get back at you. You know, our Lord tells us when an unclean spirit leaves a man, it wanders the earth seeming, seeking whom it may, uh, may enter. And then it goes back to that same man with seven more demons stronger than it. So when you when you put off certain things, you gotta be you gotta hey prepare yourself for temptation because that demon is gonna try to get at you. But our Lord tells us in Proverbs chapter twenty four and verse three, fill your room, fill your vessel, fill your mind with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Stay preoccupied in the Scripture. Through wisdom, a house is built, and by understanding, it is established. By knowledge, the rooms are filled, and with with all precious and pleasant riches. A wise man is strong. Yes, a man of knowledge increases strength. For by wise counsel, you will wage your own war. And in a multitude of counselors, there is safety. So don't take the don't take the elders and apostles for granted. Don't take the uh, Achaeum elders for granted. You know, you always want to be looking out for, for, for edification on your own personal situation, on, on where you can improve. Because there's lessons constantly going out. But our Lord tells us the kingdom of heaven is within you which is in Luke chapter 17 and verse 20. So with that being said, you want to make sure that your inner being is firmly rooted on our Father, Yahweh and our Lord, Yahweh Shai, that you're unmovable in faith, that regardless of how, how harsh a rebuke is, you can always uh, 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 learn from it, correct yourself, and continue to, to, to be diligent. All right, y'all bear with me. Like I said, this lesson was stemming off of the scripture that I'm about to get. Here in a second. This is Ephesians chapter 4. And I'll start at verse... And verse 11, Ephesians chapter four and verse 11. And he and he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for edif for edifying the body of Hamashiach till we all come to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the son of Yahweh. To the perfect, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Hamashiach, until our Lord gives us that increase, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. You know all these camps out here claiming uh, certain things are okay. You can't give a pay. Our Lord tells us give no provision for the flesh. So you can't say one thing's okay. But you, you know, you do it and you're like, you can't say one thing's okay, but you know it in your mind that it's not, you know. By the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7. Do not be deceived. The most high is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. So as I said through the spirit, man, if you think that you can, you can, uh, 
give your bare minimum, hey, the heavenly father is going to give, you know, he's, he's not going to give at all. He's going to give his bare maximum when it comes to his wrath, thinking that you could uh, uh, put up a, a, a blemish sacrifice, you know. Our Lord even told the Levites, don't be, uh, don't be taken by wine before you put up a sacrifice, you know, to be sober. But our Lord tells us we are not of those who draw back to perdition. Salaki, y'all. All right, I'm going to get to the point. This is Leviticus chapter 10 and verse 1. Then Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, each took a censer and put fire in it, put incense in it, and offered profane fire before the Lord which he had not commanded them. So they offered that profane uh, fire before the Lord. So if you are the temple of the heavenly father and his only begotten son, what do you think you're doing when you're smoking or when you're breathing in, uh, when you're breathing in a, a, a plant that was altered into being a mind altering subject, a mind altering substance. That's you taking in profane fire, profane smoke into the temple of the Lord being your temple. So fire went out from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. So, you know, it may, it may not have the direct uh, uh, context, but you don't see us out there uh, going and preaching the word and then coming home and smoking or, or, or before we go out uh, smoking, you know, hitting something and then going out, you know, so there's no there's no partiality with judgment, you know. As I said, though, I'm not trying to take it out of context. Simply saying, you are the temple of the Most High. So if you want to serve the Lord, you want to do so in with, with your whole heart, with your whole mind, with your whole spirit, with all of your being. You don't want to cut any corners and think that you could justify, oh, well, you know, it calms me down or, or, or try to make something up like it's funny. That's going to end in a real, real rough path, you know, you thinking that you could joke around with the Lord. First Corinthians chapter six and verse eight. No, you yourselves do no, you yourselves do wrong and cheat, and you do these things to your brethren. Do you not know that unrighteousness will not inherit the kingdom of, of Yahweh? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers. So the, all of those go into being unfaithful to the Lord, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. So homosexuals and sodomites goes into committing unclean acts, lewd acts, thieves, you know, you can... you. It, and it can be said you out there, you know, you may have lived that street life, but even with, uh, even in this work, even in the truth, you want to be diligent and, and study and understand for yourself and, and you'll receive further edif edification from the brothers, but you don't want to just sit around and, 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 you know, not read for yourself, not study for yourself. You know, you want to, you want to, uh, get, get familiar with the scripture, you know, because, uh, by you just listening to other brothers and, and, and repeating everything you heard, you know, somebody may ask you a question and you just may not know because you're not familiar with the scripture. You know, you want to be well, well familiar, familiarized with the scripture, you know, because uh, you leaning on another man's table. You know, every time somebody asks you something, uh, uh, you, 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 you lean on, on, on what somebody else said or, or 
uh, you know, you're just not studying for yourself. You want to be researching for yourself as well, you know. And mainly when people put that, I found out in front of it. Well, I found out this piece of history, but they just listened to a, a video, you know. That's why we give double honors to the elders and apostles. Double honors and or shall like you, uh uh peace and, and, and respect to the elder to the Akim and Elder Akim out there putting in the work and due diligence. Because if, if it wasn't for the Heavenly Father and his only begotten son waking up his men, you know, they would have they would have hey, our Lord tells us if he had not sped up the days, there would be no flesh saved. If if he would not have sped up the days for his elect's sake, no flesh would be saved. You know, so we thank the Lord that, that he woke his men up. So you want to give you want to give respect where respect is due. Nor covetous. Our Lord tells us we brought nothing into this world and you shall surely take nothing out. You shouldn't be looking at what no other man got, you know, wanting it. Thinking, oh, OK, well, you know, uh, I'm going to find me something like that and be cool. Nah, that all, hey, all you ain't done, you won't do. They're getting ready to shut the government down. You go to your you go to your local uh local grocery store. You can see certain prices on certain food items. The price is rising. Uh, they've already been talking about all these different things as far as inflation goes. So it, hey, pretty soon it's about to hit hyperinflation. You know. So so hey all hey a, a lot of what you may have already as far as uh, material things may get stripped from you. You know, those who are in this truth. Because if hey, if you're in this truth, then you know good and well not to take that jab. You know, that's that's coming to the point to where they're at. They're trying to force implement everybody to take the jab. Nor drunkards, being those who are given to philosophies, as well as those who are given a strong drink, you know, always drinking from sun up to sundown. But um, spiritually, that's speaking of philosophies, you know, different wines, no revilers, those who are constantly talking bad, you know, disrespectfully, mur uh, murmuring, mumbling, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of the most high. And such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Yahweh Shai. And by the spirit of our of our power, Yahweh. So, so, hey, Paul even recognized, hey, some of you guys were like that. You know, Paul recognized that he was a blasphemer, an insolent man, a persecutor. And he said that through the mercy of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, He had mercy on them and grace on them because he, were, he was ignorant and did so in His faithlessness. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. So as I said, man, you don't want something to have strength over your strength over your uh over your over your uh over your mental so that you're not able to make right decisions. So when it comes to all that smoking and stuff, you know, you may want to put that away. Those who may be be trying to justify themselves. First Corinthians chapter nine and verse 26. Therefore run thus, not with uncertainty. So you want to be sure in the things that you do. Thus I fight, not as one who beats the air, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection. Lest when I have preached to others, I myself should be become disqualified. So you want to partake in the Lord's mercy. You know, you don't want to be disqualified because you, you wanted to uh, give a provision for the flesh.
This is the book of Galatians. Chapter 2 and verse 14. But when I saw that they were not straightforward about the truth of the gospel, I said to Peter before them all, If you being a Jew live in the manner of Gentiles and not as the Jews, why do you compel Gentiles to live as Jews? So how can you be how can you how can you say all these things talking about uh our heritage, but yet you don't live by them, you know? We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith in Hamashiach Yahawashai, in Yahawashah Hamashiach. Even we have believed in Hamashiach Yahawashai, that we might be justified by faith in Hamashiach and not by the works of the law. For all Shalakia, for by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. But you still live in accordance to the law because our Lord is the one who justifies. But if while we seek to be justified by Hamashiach, we ourselves also are bound sinners. Is Hamashiach therefore a minister of sin? Certainly not. For if I build again those things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. So you going back and... Hey, and that, that touches on the point of all these Christian churches claiming the law is done away with and that you can that you can do all these unclean things. They're building uh they're building the things which was destroyed, making themselves transgressors. You know, our Lord tells us that he died to, to, to for the sins of Israel's for the sins of Israel and that we may be covered. Our conscience may be covered by his blood in order that our conscience may be wiped clean. But that doesn't mean that you go back and get filthy again. That means that you try to live to the best of your ability in accordance to the word of the Most High and his, and his only begotten Son. For I, through the law, died to the law that I might live to Yahweh. So his, uh, our fleshly bodies have died to the law. Meaning, uh, meaning we try to follow the law, statutes, and commandments to the best of our ability, but we're no longer living for the flesh. We're living to the we're we, uh, we're living to the heavenly Father, and his and his only begotten Son. I have been crucified with Hamashiach. It is no longer I who live, but Hamashiach lives in me, and the life which I know which I.